Thank you for joining us today at Mentor Wargaming Labs. Today we are going to be painting something from Necromunda. So this is going to be my Corpse Grinder Initiates. So these are your entry level Jews for your Corpse Grinder gang. And we're going to be painting this individual. But the rest of these guys were done in the same style. Remember when painting these guys, you can do them in a day if you're focused and you do them in an assembly line process. So that's what we're going for. Now since I love Necromunda so much, I do spend a little bit more time on these guys. So I do use a few more paints, and we take a little bit longer. But here is what I used. Prime Dumb Citadel Standard Mechanicus Gray. I used almost all Army Painter paints. So Necromancer Cloak, Cobalt Skin, Matte Black, Leather Brown, Mummy Robes, Gun Metal, Dragon Red, Dry Rust, Corpse Pale, Plate Mail Metal, Wolf Gray, Filthy Cape, Pure Red, and Fur Brown. And then I did use uh, some GW stuff. I used Seraphim Sepia as a wash. And I used Blood for the Blood God, which is uh, another technical paint. So let's go ahead and get started on painting this guy. Now the primer, Standard Mechanicus Gray, has dried. So now I'm going to put on some Necromancer Cloak. And this is going to go on his pants. And his shoes are just going to brush this on quickly. Doing all the initiates at once. It's a little bit darker than the Mechanicus Gray. And that's what I'm looking for. Now we're going to use some Army Painter Cobalt skin. Remember, he's uh, he's wearing gloves right here since he's a butcher. Close. And cut the back. Next, we're going to use some Army Painter Matte Black. I like to use this on the blade. I like to use it on his gloves. Let's see, on his belt. It takes a little bit more work because I like to leave the pants, belt straps, the necromancer cloak. Let's see, he's got one of his little charms back there.
Now I'm going to use a little bit of Leather Brown. And if you'll notice, there's these little straps that hold this, uh, our plates in. So just a quick little touch there. Now we're going to take some mummy robes here, and that is going to be this little apron. Probably need two coats on this. And I also want to do his hood. Uh, while I wait for some of this to dry, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a custom mix to do the base. So this is one part matte black and two parts iron painter gunmetal. So I'm going to take him off his base, off the hand holder. Um, doing this now because I want to put them back in the holder but the paint needs to completely dry before I do that and I got a bunch of stuff to do so I'm going to use this as a chance to do some little longer uh, drying paint processes so the reason I mix up my own paint scheme for this is because I wanted uh, black that had a hint of um, metallic to it. So I do all my terrain and all my necromunda bases in this um, color. So we'll go let that dry for a while before we put it back in its handle. Right, got it back in the handle. We're going to use some Army Painter gunmetal. Use my tinier brush just to make, I'm trying to get these little latches down here. Then I am going to go to these little slot connectors up here. Now with these models, they have these little connectors in their torsos. So I'm going to use this to carefully pick those out. charms and the hilt of the blade, the handle of the blade, pommel, then I'm going to do the helmet. We'll do that except for the mouth grip right here. That'll be red later. We'll get to that. And then we'll do pistole. So these parts I'm going to paint red. But the rest I'm going to do in the gunmetal color. Now we're going to use some Army Painter Dragon Red. And we're going to do the plates here, here. I also have three of his little 
Corpse Grinder Charms here. One here. There's one on its back. The forearm guards and the shoulder plates. Also important is I paint their grills red. And also You know, I vary this up depending on which initiate I do so that all the pistols don't look the same, but... So we'll go through, finish blocking in the red. Alright, now I'm going to put a rust effect on the base. And for that, I use dry rust. And I'm going to open this up and put, put a drop. And then I'm going to take him out of his handle again. And then, where'd that brush go? Ah, there it is. And pick brush that's kind of falling apart. I use it for these things. Take the butt here. Get a little water, mix it into the, dro the drop there. Gonna mix it. And let's check the viscosity, pull it up. Nope, not runny enough yet. Right up. See a lot more of it's filtering down. So let's see how sticky I want it. Okay, that's sticky enough. So I get my brush here. And I kind of push it in to all the recesses. Now it might look bright now. That'll actually tone down as it dries since it's watered down. I like to carefully move around the shoes. I'll do the sides of the base. Get that off his shoe there. Okay. Let's say if get this on. It's going to take a while for this to dry too. I spend a lot more time on my Necromunda guys than most of my other lines. So imagine I do this with all the little terrain plates. You can vary how many layers you put on here to vary the amount of rust. Okay, I'm going to let him dry. Pick that up. He does. If you can hear it, I have an overhead fan on. That'll slowly dry it. Alright, then we'll be back. My little model has dried on the dry rust there, and now I'm going to use some Seraphim Sepia. So you notice I don't have them on his handle, and that's because I'm going to coat this whole thing in Seraphim Sepia. So i get a brush head messed up, wet it a little bit. And Seraphim Sepia is my favorite wash for my Necromunda guys and gals. Aliens. I'm 
just want to make sure it's coated all over. This is why it's a good thing to do Necromont models as a production line. Just the way I do it requires long drying times in between, so might as well get them done as batches. Alright, now we're ready to move on the base. They get a nice thick coat. Now you notice the dry rust did as I said, it didn't dry as that neon color. With the seraphim sepia on top, it'll look like grime has settled on top of the corrosion. We'll set them on there. There we go. Now let this dry. And we'll come back when he's all good and get him mounted back up in his paint handle. Now everything's dried up and um, <laughs> forgot to do his thigh pads. So I painted them red and uh, washed them with seraphim sepia. Now I'm going to take a little bit more cobalt skin. I'm just going to run it, a thin bead of it across um, just the top of the mus musculature there. So using the side of the tip of the brush, just some quick strokes there. Like it, some of the abs, the cerulatos. Just some touches there on the raised portions, the exposed skin. All right. Now we're going to take some Army Painter Corpse Pale. Take our thin brush here. We only need a little bit of this, and kind of like what we did with the. Uh, cobalt skin earlier. I'm just going to put trace some lines around the raised edge of the musculature. Now for stuff like the abs and the bicep, I'm just going to take it and go side, side, side. Side, 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 side. That and just Brush along the top. Dot, dot, dot. I'll just do that along the back also. Little shiny spot in this bald dome. And let's get that place up there. There we Next go. Next up will be Army Painter's Plate Mail Metal. And so I'm going to take my brush, dip it in, get some paint on there. Now I'm going to wipe a lot of it off like that. And then just gonna get some of the edges here that are metal. So just a little touch there, there. Just sliding the brush there. Not much plate mail is getting on there. Just enough to change some of the tone. Make some of these edges shine. Give some dimensionality to the piece. Remember, do both sides. We've got the little feeding hookups. Now 
I'll do the helmet here. Alright, now I'm going to move on to the blade. I'm going to do is take the edge, that, and then hit these serrations here. Just quickly glide over them. A bone saw. There we go. Now I'll use some wolf gray. And so this is a, a very bright blue. So I'm just going to use hints of it. And what we're going to do is just the ray surface on some of the gloves, some of the edges here, and just the black out of the gloves. And the reasoning being is the um, gray in the pants. And everything else, I want to give this a look of being like a rubber or vinyl. Make sure that have just a little bit of paint on it when you do this. Just fall in the creases of that glove. And do some of the knuckles. If you put it on too much, just dab it off with your pinky, like that. We're going to use some Army Painter Filthy Cape, and that is going to be for the same thing we did with the gloves. Just hit some of these edges of the pants. And the boots. There we go. You see that brought a little bit of life to the sculpt there. No, got matches the gloves, but you can see even the black and that black are different because of the different highlights makes it look like a different material. All right, let's move on. Now we're getting close to the end here, and we're going to do some mummy robes. And my palette is white, so when I put white paint on it, it becomes a little bit harder to find. So just lightly hit 
the edges, if I can stay centered on the camera. You just need a little bit. Just get these raised edges here. You notice that changes the timbre of the look. See me kind of mashing the bristles in there. So I go along the edge and that puts most of the paint on it. And then since the paint's diluted from the brush, I can push into these more recessed areas and decide how much the pigment I want to go into them. And I think that will do it. Now we're going to take some pure red. And this is just going to be highlights here. Just touch it real quick. Try to get the edges of some of these plates. And I, I do this messy just because they're supposed to be grungy plates. Using the side of the brush, just pick an edge there and run it along. Depending on how much color you want, you can put some more coats. And that'll the more layers of the red you add. So we can go back over other areas we've done and when it's dry, just put a second layer and that changes the color again. Makes it uh, more intense as you apply more layers of pigment. little lucky charms here. Now we're gonna work on the fun part here. So I've got a brush and if you get really close there you can see the bristles are tight together but they're starting to fray apart. So I'm gonna get poured out some fur brown right there. Army painter fur brown. Where is it? Yes, this right here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna speckle Punch, 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 punch down. You see maybe another coat. Just a little punch, 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 punch. I want to remember where I punched down on it. Okay. Now I'm going to take some blood for the blood god. This is a technical paint for GW. Army Painter has a similar one, but just for consistency. I'm going to use the same across all my lines. So that's what it looks like. Very thick there. And I'm just going to get my brush there and I dipped a little bit. So let's get that. And then the same spots we just did in the fur brown, we're going to go punch, punch. Get some more off that.
There, that gives it the blood spatter. Let's go. Hey, there we go. A little blood spray on there. If I was really good, I'd probably do like a little handprint. Just touch it up and make it look less like. All right, and you can blood splattered approach. You'll notice that as the um, they go up in rank, um, there's less blood on them. They get more precise in their cuts. So let's go. Maybe just a little bit more. There you go. That's always my problem. Get a little too crazy with this, but I'm gonna get out a tiny brush and just get. But like get some down streaks. And this so yeah, that's a good thing to do. Just a little spray, and then you'll have when you cut someone really close. There we go. All right, so that's gonna be our guy there. Clean from behind, bloody up front. Well, thank you for joining us at Miniature Wargaming Labs, and we'll see you next time.